So I genuinely thought it was my random wake up thing. My random wake up thing is boners. Boners are a great wake up thing. Yeah, you will go back to our stupid reaction to Ian's of Corbin. Oh, uh, For those of you who don't know, particularly the ladies, uh, real, real common to uh, arise with a Woody. I've never done it, actually. Really? Wow. It's really fun if you're laying face down, because then when you wake up, you're kind of levitating. Welcome back. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, all those kind of stuff and things. And juiciness dripping and juiciness. from every hole. Uh, known to today me. we're doing a movie review. <laughs> Of the 2023 film. Isn't that this year? I think so. Whoa. Uh, depends on when you're seeing it, I guess. That's true. You could be watching this in 3033. Hi. Hi from the past. We're both dead now. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what if we were? I, that'd be a funny joke, I would I love. <laughs> I would love to know somehow to be able to know that that actually happened in 3033. You wouldn't be able to. Wouldn't it? Um, but uh, today we're doing a movie review of the 2023. You know what's going to happen? We will come back as another human being and we'll be watching the reactions and see that and have a really strong deja vu maybe yeah anyway what were uh, you saying of the 2023 tamil film vidutali vidutali part one yeah. uh i think that's what it's called uh directed we. directed by another mispronunciation forgive us vitri Maran, who also uh co-wrote it and it was based off a novel called your mom whatever this is yeah do Dunaivin. By uh, this... Jaya Mohan. Uh, composed by Raja Sir. Starring uh, Suri mm -hmm. is your main lead. And then also a supporting role with Vijay Sadapathy and uh, Bhavani, Bhavani Shri. Shri. And a or whole, bu and a whole bunch of other bi uh, people. Uh, big ensemble piece. But uh, Suri is your, your, your main lead in this one. Um, it came out a while ago, so we're just going to go ahead and do a, a spoiler review just because it's been out for um, a few months now. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, see it. And then come back. We saw it on Z5. Uh, so if it's available there or if it's available somewhere else in India, you just, yeah, it may be. And actually it. here's what we'll do. Um, we'll give our synopsis as to what we thought of the film. Okay. Unspoilery. That way you can hear whether we liked it or not, and then go watch it if you have not seen it. Yes. So, uh, your initial, uh, I guess, summary thoughts, my summary thoughts, obviously we'll get into the nuts and bolts. I really enjoyed this movie a lot. I felt like I was watching, um, a Mani Ratnam film. Mm. Uh, it, 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 it had to me that heart, that sense of pacing, willing to risk slow pace that might bore an audience, but trusting that the audience is engaged enough and intelligent enough and you're telling a good enough story that the audience will stay with you. I thought uh, it was just uniformly a really enjoyable and really good film, and I, I, I'm looking forward to part two. No shock that... Um uh, Monty Rotnam was one of his heroes. Yeah. Um, it really did it, didn't it feel like a Monty Rotnam film? Do you remember he was the director? Yeah, in the, in, the, in the panel. In the panel. The only one we didn't really know. Yep. Uh, Which is wild right because I want to see his film. I wrote down the name of the film. The, he, his film from, I believe it was 2016, that is called Visorani. Oh, yeah. Was the official selection to the Oscars. Yeah. That I, year. I, I rem. Um, so, and. Uh, Oh, we haven't seen it. But no, I've, we haven't. I've, I've heard. Now I would very, very much like to. Uh, oh no, I apologize. We have no. That's not the one we saw. Sorry, I was thinking of. I was thinking. No, wait. No, that's a different film. No, it's not. Yeah, that's this. The film I'm referring to is from 2016. No, I'm saying we've seen something of his. Oh, okay, but yeah, but it, we have not seen that one. That it I was, was a Suran, to. a Suran, which you didn't actually like. I, which is why I don't remember it. From what I recall. Correct me if I'm thinking of a different one, but I'm pretty sure this is the one that you you felt. I, I felt differently. I, we had a different opinion on this film. Um, that you felt it was more of a, a religious style of film, uh, from what I recollect. I don't remember yeah, sorry, so I don't much remember. about that review. But that is, if, if I that's the one I'm thinking of, which I believe it is. And if I don't like a film, I typically don't save headspace for it unless it was so tremendously bad I could never oh, forget no, it. Oh, no, so I, I'm a fucking idiot. We saw Vada Chennai. Uh, a oh, Sloran, yeah, Vada Chennai. Um, and uh, this, which... What is this about? Sorry. Uh, 
that's that's the one. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, that's the one that was a so, on, yeah. that was the official selection. I've heard a lot about it, so you guys can let us know if that's worth it. And so, what did you what did you um, think? I really enjoyed it. I I don't think it's without its flaws in terms of um, some some different stuff like some editing choices, maybe some length, but also that could have been because we saw the director's cut. They uh, I found that out after they put the director's cut on. Z5. Yeah, there's a well, there's both. You can choose from both actually. Which if you just go to the link you sent me, uh, it takes me directly to that. But if you go to Z5 and look the film up, you can't do there's it. a theatrical cut, and then there's I a... I think it's just 15 minutes. Yeah. But it's uh, taken away. I would much rather watch a director's cut. And then there's cut. some other little things, but overall, I thought it was... Uh, Monty Rotten was a very good comparison, because um, it's all very story-driven. It's a performance uh, as well. Hard-hitting. Mm -hmm. uh, With important messages. A, oh, he was the producer on the Crow one. Ah, Remember that one? Yeah. Um, the one with the bad pizza at the end? Yep. Uh, really good film, though. A special appearance. Sorry, I'm just going through his IMDb now. Um, a brilliant opening sh uh, scene. The opening shot, we'll talk about it in yeah, a Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the, it's a, it's it, incredible. It's an incredible one shot. That's all I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, one of the best we've seen, I think. Yeah, I, think I just, I just, I, my very first note opening shot is magnificent and it happened actually quite a few times throughout the film as well in terms of um really good um camera work i, I think we saw a behind the scenes thing on this at, at one oh point. did we uh, i think the, the, the guy that was um rollerblading backwards uh -huh. thing, uh -huh. that was from this oh okay i believe it was from the end okay um that would make sense but um so ultimately Optimum, I, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a hard-hitting film. I'm hoping we get it in theaters so we can see it in theaters. The second part, yeah, part two. It, comes it, out. it says it's supposed to come next year. Next year. Yeah. Okay. That's what, um, that's what the, the internet says about it. A very hard-hitting film that I think uh, you will appreciate. But uh, I'll get into so now we'll spoil some it. Of stuff. Let's spoil if you it. haven't seen it, please go. Yeah, go watch see it. it. And now this is for everybody who has seen the film. Well, let's just start at the beginning. That yeah. one shot, man. That one that, shot that was fucking brilliant. In addition to the brilliance of that one shot. The the stunt jump, where the guy jumps yeah. on the train and breaks his leg. Yeah, I don't know how. How the heck did they do that shot? I don't know if it was green screen and the the train was CGI. Maybe it was it was great CGI if it was. Yeah, for me, it was a flawless watch to see him jump and watch it looked like an actual leg break. And there was another incredibly time. well done stunt work and this is brilliant. Great um, stunt work. Because there was another time where a guy I think got shot and he looked like he landed on his face mm -hmm. and it looked like that stuntman actually did may have that. gotten hurt. And our 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 lead um forgive me for not knowing Sorry. his yeah right off the top he had some I'm pretty sure he did his own stunt work when he was doing the rooftop jumps at the end of the film from yeah. and hitting the tile roofing and sliding and falling off the tile roofing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Great the, the one shot. But was, that one shot, I would love to see the behind the scenes of that one shot because you know what it reminded me of. That took a lot of choreography, a lot of choreography, and it reminded me of it's a it's a better one as far as the intricacies. But it reminded me of the there's a, the opening one shot in what's the war movie? It's just the year. Was it 1917? Oh, 19, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah, that opening shot is just tremendous mm -hmm. and this too when it got off to its start i was immediately blown away yeah it was yeah. it was absolutely incredible so shout out to the cinematography team and the camera work team incredible editing team and i know there was some and VFX, vfx in that as well so it's a yeah there's a forgivable weakness in yeah. the final train fall yeah that is just unfortunate in regard to the fact that if they probably had more money they yeah. could have cleaned it I up but it's a, utterly forgivable i imagine it's had a very small budget yeah um because that happened a few times with vfx yeah, yeah, yeah. in the film um forgivable because you know that uh, when that happens you know there's like i bet they would have wished they had more money because yeah. they would have been able to because they right. can see it right <laughs> of course <laughs> they know they know but also it's forgivable their producers were like this is a genre film that you who knows if you're how much money you're going to make back? Exactly. And I think it did well. Yeah, um, it did. It said it was a, a box office success. Um, so that's good. Uh, but so let's talk about Suri as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe we've ever seen him before. I don't believe we have either. Uh, if we have, please let me know. He gave a lovely performance. Agree. I I loved his character. I loved so did his I. sincerity. I loved his. Um, I, I cared for him. Yep. I liked the fact that he was. Felt like like the only good man in the entire. Yeah, he had film. he had the moral. He's a good man. Yeah, um, he's a good man who doesn't want to be pushed. And you didn't also get the feeling that maybe if he was pushed to the edge, he was going to flip a switch. You just felt like this guy is no matter what's going on, he's going to want to do the right thing, and 
he doesn't understand why other people wouldn't want to do the right thing. Yeah. Re and, and just such the, the best of the best things you can say about an actor. No performativeness, no sense that he's being watched, willing to just let the moment be. Uh, just really a lovely. He carries, he has to, he, he yeah. really carries the film and makes you care for him and care about what he cares about. Absolutely. Uh, and his, his love interest, and I, I believe it's, it's beautiful. Um, um, is that her? Yeah, forgive me if this is mispronounced. Bhavani Shrey? Beautiful performance. I, uh, I love her. Their chemistry was great. Agreed. Uh, as well. Um, I really, like, immediately upon the first, I think, love song that they had. Yeah. It was, I think, really when you started to really care for them, which is one of the great things about Indian cinema and the way they use songs mm -hmm. in there. It shows a long period of time in a short right. period of time and right. it gets you like invested in these people yeah. in their relationship real quickly that yeah. no other cinema can really do outside of I guess musicals. <laughs> yeah. Um but Indian cinema is unique in in the way they do it. But I thought her performance was great. I thought I I cared for she had a lot of really great performance at the end. I know. Even though I know it's not their fault. There, there's blurring stuff that just. I have, I have, I wrote something about that. I, it, I have to share. It pisses me off, not because I know that's probably not what they wanted. Obviously, I know they probably had to do it. It just sucks because it takes away from the point of them the, doing it. The this, actors. This is the one thing I wanted to. Sh this is the only thing I wrote something about mm. that I, I really need to share. And it wasn't something to say at the front, but since you brought it up. Oh, in it, case it, so it, you don't know what I'm talking about. They blurred everybody who was naked, the males and the females. And there's a lot of nudity in the film. Yeah. A lot of it. Um, so here, here's what I had to say about that, because it, it, it too, it, it, it just infuriates me. Yeah. So none of the nudity in this film is either gratuitous or graphic. Nope. The nudity in this film is tremendously important in showing us the extraordinary vulnerability of innocent victims and what it means to be dehumanized by corruption. Yep. Any adult who has a problem with seeing or allowing other adults to see the naked human body in a movie painting or other form of art, especially when that nudity is absolutely necessary in the storytelling, that person, that person is either unhealthily prudish and or stiflingly religious. One of the major contributors to unhealthy opinions about sex and the human body is a direct result of this kind of prudishness and religiousness. And any man who can't look at the naked female body without objectifying it or losing their own self-control has a serious psychological or moral problem they need to address. And I want to commend and applaud the bravery of the men, but especially the women who were courageous in portraying characters who needed to be naked and were naked a lot, mm -hmm. so that it it, it it just and I know it's infuriating the censor board and whatever that because of you know sentiments and all that crap. Um, in in just, what context in real life would you ever walk into a room where someone's being interrogated and they're naked and somehow their body would be blurred? It would never happen. It violates suspension of disbelief. Yeah. It is an affront to artistry. Yeah, it's in the name of censorship yeah like the fact that you can in this film and i'll talk about it cut off a man's arm and that's okay <laughs> preach corbin yeah but like you can't see a naked body which we all have like I, we all know what's under there <laughs> it's 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 yeah. especially when the artists themselves are willing to yeah. r share that part of themselves for the for the importance of the storytelling yeah it's it's, it's maddening so yeah that was uh inferior. but the fact that their performance all the females uh, at the end when that was going on and her when she was talking about you know her mom her her dad or any other time that she was upset or um she gave a great performance i liked her performance a lot very um, much i loved it yeah um vj sadapathy I, I liked him i'm looking forward to seeing more cause, of him because you got you got like it was like fafa in, in push you just got a little like a little sizzle yeah. of, of Vijay Sadapathy. Um and so I'm I'm assuming in the second bar he's gonna be a lot lot Which I hated the ending, but I, I didn't hate the ending. I hated the ending, but I didn't hate no, the which, ending. No, are you talking about just the well, abrupt ending? Or are you talking about the glimpse into the second part? Okay, so there's two parts to the ending. Okay, I hated the glimpse. So the when it ended, it it bothered me as much as the two towers ending. Mm. It's one of those things of no. But I get it. It's part one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like watching Gangs of Wasapur and you realize this is one film. So they end it 
mid story and you that's a good thing you want more the the thing I genuinely disliked and wish was not there it was the gl- was the, the glimpse of what's coming it seemed it uh, felt like a TV series wanting to show you what the next episode yeah, was going to be and it was not done not, well not done well and not needed it was herky jerky yeah it was it just, just kind of sloshed you didn't together need it. I knew I don't need to, I, I, I didn't need to see I'm all already that. invested in what's coming so, I don't need to see anything in that's, fact I that's kind of don't want to see anything that's what the trailers for if you're going to release a trailer yeah. is release it then I, I so it's well done because yeah. that wasn't well done you left me I, I was hooked and now I kind of want to wriggle off the hook a little bit after watching yeah. those things yeah I didn't like the uh, the, the glimpse there yeah. at the end but yeah the um, I actually enjoyed the ending of, and I'm assuming that's how Gangs of Wasper kind of did it in theater yeah it just said you know what we're done telling the story here right now deal with it yeah exactly <laughs> I liked it um, <laughs> one of the things that was super interesting and I actually have seen some um people that liked and disliked, and I was kind of in the middle, was the score. There were certain parts that I loved because it was old school. I don't, like, it... Another reason it felt money rotten yeah, to me. Yeah, it felt like we... Steph uh, had me, showed me, uh, like, this old school horror, uh, Haunting of Hill House or something, but the old one, right? Right, the Vincent Price, right? Yeah. He's oh, the, the original. The original. Okay, I and haven't it, seen that. Like, it almost, the score's almost Scooby-Doo-esque. Okay. And that's what it felt at times. And I don't okay. know if it was Monty or if it was a different person that did the, the background score. I know he did the songs. So you guys can tell me. I don't know if he does the background stuff. But I love that because it was w- w- different. It almost it felt bombay to yeah, me. Yeah, it was like very eerie. And yeah. then there were other times that the score was very different. And I don't know if I loved the differences in it uh, all that well. Um, I love that it wasn't overscored. Yeah, it definitely wasn't overscored. Lots of moments of just breathing and letting it be. And you could tell there was some... Um, audio issues with um, uh, I'm assuming on the day the budget yeah <laughs> for for uh, ADR yeah ADR yeah. And sound whatever because uh, you could tell that but uh, like I said I, I chalk a lot of that up to the money uh, aspect if you don't have money you can't do everything perfectly sadly in filmmaking yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, money doesn't make you make a perfect film at all no it just uh, helps you tell the story you want to tell with as much technical yeah. expertise as you can yeah that's it, all it definitely helps the technical it side it really does things. yeah um but yeah, th- that was one of the issues slash things I did actually really enjoy was the the quirkiness, the old school feel. Is, Agreed. Like it was almost. And I was like, this is yeah, different. It was very and, and much lovely. a tip of the cap. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And I liked it a lot in a in a more modernish style film. Um, some of the uh, I I did feel that it, it probably could have benefited. Maybe the theatrical version was uh, kind of on the runtime tighter. Yeah. As opposed to, I think it was uh, almost 240, I think it is what they were in time. Maybe closer to two hours would have been a, a better feel. It didn't, It didn't like, I, it wasn't excruciating yeah. by any stretch. It's tough. I see both sides of the yeah. coin to that. I absolutely understand why somebody would say, you could have easily chipped 15 minutes off this thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Yes, I see both sides. Um, I The, the Surdi's character um, was so... Interesting, because you're like, <laughs> you're like wanting him. You're like, you have great moral compass, but you're also like, God, you're going through a lot of shit right now. I yeah, really I, don't I want so, you to go through this, <laughs> right? You so much want him to just tell everybody and stop everybody. And he's so long suffering and patient, and you, they they really made you sit with his suffering for a you long. Re- <laughs> the, they make you sit with his suffering, and the other thing I really appreciated is that we the the, the he didn't our writer director he didn't feel the need in any way to say anything other than what was story driven and specifically the moral compass for suri and what made him who he was as a moral man is a bit more it, it's kind of clouded in mystery in terms of his backstory yeah which made it all the more interesting as to what is it that makes this guy so deeply moral in the especially in the midst of corruption how naive was he to get into law enforcement and not understand the corruption that was there Mm. and i also loved what i found to be an incredibly interesting moment which is where the door opens up and he's got vj satapathy there at gunpoint Mm. and i'm thinking on the one hand yeah he's broken the law and you're going to arrest him but at the same time what Vijay sadapathy has been doing is trying to stop the corruption of the people you're with right now. Yeah, it was. It, they definitely, um, outside of maybe the villagers, um, they really out in Suri. They really made you feel like, do you know who 
the villain is here. Right. Do you really know who's the bad guy? The police, which is a common theme in Indian cinema. Uh, like the corruption of the police is. Yeah. I mean, that's probably, especially in crime stuff, like, happens. Ninety-five pretty much every country. Time. Yeah, I mean, um, but especially in Indian cinema. Yes, they, especially they, they definitely call out the corruption um, of the police a lot. A lot. Um, Probably so, the single most pointed at yeah. area yeah. of corruption. Absolutely. Um, and so, is it are the police the bad people here? Are the terrorists? the bad people here the terrorists um i mean i guess they kind of uh, the villagers were hiding the terrorists i guess you could you could say right um but they they really and i'm wondering if in the second part which is one of the reasons i, I wish they didn't give you the glimpses me too because I've, I, I've thrown them out of my head I'm like hopefully it's in like a year so we yeah could, we can forget, forget everything they showed us because <laughs> it was bad i didn't want to see any of that um like I don't even understand the point. The only <laughs> and the only reason I watched it, I was ready to turn it off, but I did what I always do. I I scanned forward to see if there's anything in the credits for a post scene. Yeah, but it wasn't a post scene. It was just next time on Vidatali Part One. Yeah, I, it, I wish I would have skipped it. For me too. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I'm assuming in the second part, it's going to kind of turn you on your head and be like, um, what why they're doing specifically what they're doing, even though they um did chop people up and kill people pretty good yeah, yeah even though if it is the police that maybe had done something to them or we know they have done stuff to them like kill people and yeah and and shove it off as uh they got attacked and um and all this kind of stuff so i'm betting that's what's gonna what's gonna happen because uh, i do too i believe the police were probably the bigger villain here than what the um the terrorists and i i'm interested to see what they do with the relationship between kumarasan suri and Vijay Sarapathy's character, because in many respects, they feel, and I'm not saying this is a copy, I'm saying this is a really wonderful tension between a perceived protagonist and a perceived antagonist that most of you would know more vividly from anything in modern cinema is the relationship between Batman and the Joker in The Dark Knight and how they kind of are two sides of the same coin in a way yeah. i i i hope we kind of get into more of that because i feel like these two guys are very much i almost feel like vj sadapathy's character is who suri would be if he had been reached to the breaking point and he said enough is enough i'm tired of the corruption and he went to the far extreme i think they're both driven by the same values mm -hmm. and i'd love to see more of that explored in part two yeah did they ever go over what they did outside of in the forest because it's presumed that they're the ones that did the train attack right 100 a, a, a presumed, presumed and he's accused as being the leader of the train attack yes uh did they ever take credit for that like did i or did i miss that at all i don't believe that. or was it like a setup to go after we don't i that probably will be revealed in part two i don't i don't think that that was clarified i think okay. it's made apparent by the storytelling that he's the one responsible, but that could be a wonderful switch to make it look like the police and the government did that as an excuse to get more resources to go after him. Yeah, um, which I, I don't know. If I miss stuff, please let me uh, but a, a no. I didn't see anything on a larger scale other than what they had been doing within the village in that, that particular region. Yeah. Um, which is crazy. The predominant, and this is often seen a lot in corruption pointing, uh, when they do the political corruption pointing beyond the police, more often than not, and that's the case in this film, it points to the politicians aren't making decisions based on what's right and right and wrong. They're making decisions based on what's going to look better for them for re-election. And I think that's probably what's going to happen because they alluded to that a lot. A lot. Uh, whether a politician speaking at an event or the guy basically them meeting with the police um, a lot uh, and talking about what they should do. Right. Um, and it was all – it was – all about the ruling party and the opposition party. Right. Not about what's best. Right. Um, so I'm assuming that's what's going to happen, and we're going to find out more about Vijay's character. I hope so. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to part Because two. his love interest, uh, Su Suri's, mm -hmm. her, she, he, she said her brother, right, yeah. left to join him, and she hasn't seen him in about seven years, right? Right. And so there's... I, I suspect we know who the brother is. Already? I, I could be wrong. It may be too simple for me to think this. I think Vijay Sadapathy's her brother. 
But he's been in the village. Oh, he, was she just covering? I think she was covering. Why wouldn't she tell him, though? Who? Suri? Suri? Because she was pretty open with Suri. She was. But I think she didn't tell him for two reasons. Mm. I think the first one was because he's such a moral and good man, it might distance him from her because he he's afraid of hurting her going after him. And secondarily, I think she's afraid, knowing he's a moral man, that... You're saying Suri is a moral man. Yeah. Okay. I, I just think for her... She was. She's just too afraid of what. There's too many negative outcomes that could happen to her brother and to her relationship with Suri, who she clearly loves, for her to fully reveal. I could be very, very wrong, hmm. but that's just my yeah, my. That, that's my maybe. thought. That's my thought. Maybe. Um, yeah, I didn't pick up on that. Um, but um, <laughs> there's a funny moment in this um, when the guy was trying to bring the other guy tea. And he kept, he kept going, go, like, do you remember the part? Like, it was um, the two police officers, uh, like the high up police officers were talking about something. And the guy brought them tea and he kept trying to give it to him, but they weren't. Oh, around no, to... I, I'm, I'm not. I'm blanking on that. I didn't pick up on that. that. very funny. I didn't pick I, up on I that. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it was uh, kind of a, um, a quirky moment of it that I, I enjoyed. Um, any other uh, no. points of it that you'd like to talk about? No, that, that was it. I just all in all really really enjoyed it i think probably my favorite thing above all aside from the ultimate being i mean the bravery of these these the men and women willing to to be so vulnerable in their nudity the the, the primary thing of i'm so impressed with his uh, ability to tell a story where he's willing to allow things to go slowly mm -hmm. knowing many people might say ah, i was bored uh like you know there's <laughs> People who said, I don't like Oppenheimer. There's too much talking. That's fine. You don't need... I, I, love, I love writers and directors who are not there to appease an audience for the meanings of box office success, but are willing to tell the story they want to tell and the risk of distancing themselves from people who may say it's boring. That's my favorite aspect of this. It's a, still such a good film. Yeah, did you finally see Barbie? No, not yet. I've been okay. busy this week. All right. And we're going to hopefully get to it maybe this weekend? or tomorrow or something Yeah, okay, like good, good, good. I've been uh, wanting great. to get so, to yeah, it. Great, so yeah, no, ultimately uh, a great takeaway. Can't what, wait for part two. Uh, where's this fall in your favorites of the year? It's up there. Also, and Dammel, man. Also, for Oscar submission, would you still put LJPs over yeah. for Oscar submission? Yeah. Uh, okay. O only because I think his film is so cinematically... The, cine the cinematic IQ of yeah. that man is so, 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 so but high. But also, foreigners won't get all the... I know. The if you're talking... Nuances of that film. If either. you're talking about accessibility and you're talking about messaging that needs to be heard, the fact that this deals so much with corruption in such a real way, and hopefully the Academy members would see a version of this that isn't censored. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I, I yeah. wouldn't be bothered if this was the submission. Yeah. It would not bother me. I think you have a higher likelihood of cinematic appreciation in the LGP. In the LGP. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. most non Indians. Well, what about the superhero film? Would you think? I, I, that, that. <laughs> of the three, that's the one I'd watch more often. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to watch Schindler's List no. all the time. And. Um, and also, once again, I do appreciate in this the, uh, the fact that they showed the gory parts. Like the fact that he cut his freaking arm off. Also, great, uh, uh, great prop. Uh, um, uh, no, yeah, the visual um, effects people and VFX. the makeup people. Great, great, great job, job on the on the on. They killed people multiple times, and it was uh, they shot a lot of blood. And and, and uh, I appreciate that when you, especially the opening train shot. Oh, the yeah. amount of graphic appendages and blood and guts was just. And everybody was on. I'm, I was looking around for background people making mistakes, and nobody was making mistakes. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, people doing this and like looking to see if someone's coming. <laughs> and the timing of everything, the timing the, of everything, the of, choreography oh. on that entire thing for a 12 minute one shot. That's the worth worth the price of admission that's, right there. That's a harder choreography than a lot of dances. <laughs> it really was. It's one of the best opening shots I've ever seen. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so looking forward to the second part. Let us know what you thought about this film uh, and what should be the next. Donald film from this director or others that we should watch down below.